Hey guys, welcome back to the Grant Mitt Podcast, episode number 66. And in this episode, we're going to be discussing how to get out of a slump and ultimately build the momentum that you want to in your life and in your business. First, why do slumps even occur? What causes them? How do you stay out of them? All these things are so important. And what typically happens and what we have to realize, no matter what we do, whether we're a salesperson, we're an entrepreneur, we're an engineer, we're a musician, we're an athlete, whatever you do and whatever your career occupation is, if you show up, you work hard, you do the little things right, no matter how good you are, you're constantly changing every single day. Heck, you might have listened to this podcast. Now suddenly you think differently. You may have gone on a run, had a breakup, had a conversation with someone that you maybe never really talked to before. Or you just now had talked to thousands and thousands of people as a salesperson and the way that you react and the way you feel and the way that you perceive things has changed. So this is going to change your delivery. The best metaphor and example to this is for any of you guys that's ever played golf, as a golfer, your swing is constantly changing. So what that means is it takes effort and focus and practice and studying your swing and your success and your failures over and over and over again, not to get better, but to even stay the same, which means if you as a sales rep or you as a business person, if you've made six figures for the last three years, it's going to still take effort to even do the exact same thing you did before. Not only are you changing, but everything around you is also changing as well, including the market, your competitors, the economy, what's happening in the world. Everything is constantly evolving. So if you're not growing with those things and adjusting and evolving, you're going to enter into slumps. You're going to enter into challenging seasons that maybe you could have prepared for or been a little bit more proactive for. So I'm going to break down three ways, one, to actually get out of a slump and then three ways to prevent it. And I want to break down a couple of stories and situations that I've had for myself, but also just my team, my sales reps and people I've worked with in my organizations. So number one, how to get out of a slump. Realize that whatever situation that you're currently in, good and bad, is a result of the information that you currently have, meaning your intelligence, the things that you know, and the things that you are doing or the habits that you have every single day. Life can be very complex, but it's also moved by very simplistic things. Like what do you listen to? What do you think about? And ultimately, most importantly, what do you actually do? I think John Maxwell says this, that if you want to change your life, it will never change unless you change something you do daily, your habits. Your habits have to change to create different results. And that doesn't guarantee they're going to be better. doesn't mean that they're going to be worse. They're just going to be different. And the common theme of this episode that I want you guys to really rationalize and think through is every thought and most importantly, every action that you take has a ripple effect of events that change your life in some way way, positive, negative, or neutral. It's always evolving. So if you're not paying attention, your life can go in a lot of different ways extremely quickly. So if you're in a slump right now, you don't like where your life's at. Number one, what I want you to do is find a three-day period. Maybe take off a day of work on Friday, maybe go on a quick trip, or just if you have to work one day, that's fine, but do it when you're connected to Saturday and Sunday or the weekend. And I want you to pull yourself away from the world in some capacity. Don't see your friends that weekend. Tell your family you're going to kind of just stay to yourself. If you got a spouse, find a way to be more solo, a little bit pulled away so you can actually have time to think. And most importantly for this first step, I want you to cut off all negativity and all busy day-to-day distractions. You don't want to be constantly stimulated by maybe kids or family, wife, husband, spouse, coworkers, employees, problems, the news, TikTok, Instagram. I want you to literally, cold turkey, just almost disappear from the world for three days. Stop having all of the current programming that's shaped the way that you're thinking now, which is creating the result that you have right now that you don't like. Cut that off cold turkey. You need to recenter yourself. If you can't find a space or three days to just stop and think and recenter and reset yourself as a person, it's going to be really hard to change the current situation that you're in. You have to pull away. 
okay? Step two, what I want you to do is look at the person or result that you want to create. And I want you to think about what information and skill sets does that person possess? Meaning if the 2.0 or 3.0 version of yourself where you're doing three times the sales revenue, you're promoted, you're financially free, you're out of debt, you're successful, what skill sets, mindsets, and talents does that person, does that version of yourself possess? And I want you to go find all of that knowledge for free on the internet, whether it's YouTube, whether it's a book, whether it's a podcast, whether it's a mentor. And I want you for a full entire day and over this course of this, this three-day weekend or whatever the case is, to study and download that information into your brain. Okay, so if you want to learn sales, study the best sales experts that are on YouTube and that have podcasts and take notes, spend hours doing that. If you want to become a better leader, find out who are the best leaders in the world right now, living or maybe someone that's passed away that was an incredible leader that has a lot of information that you can read, study and learn. I want you to just download all that information. Maybe you need to have a, be more mentally tough and have a better mindset. Who in the world has a really great mindset that you want to emulate and copy and actually add to your arsenal so you can implement it into your life? Read all of their books. Listen to all their interviews. What you're going to start noticing, even just after a couple of hours, you're going to feel a little bit different because now you don't have all these bullets and all these problems and all these people and all this negativity and all this crap that we deal with every day from the news and from social media and from just normal day lives. We don't have that coming at us. So since that stopped, you're already going to feel better, but now you're getting the best information that the most successful and well thought leaders and, and world changers in the world have, it's now entering your brain. That means you're slowly just creating a better, more improved version of yourself. Now, once you do all these things, what I want you to do is you've, you've pulled away from the world, you've gotten away from all the negativity, and now you've started downloading all the right information. This is going to feel good. Now, you do have some bullets now, some arsenal to say, okay, we can attack the market, we can get back to it. But realize that if we just learn all these things, feel really good, go, ah, I feel better about my life, and then you just get back to it, just like we were talking about earlier as like the golfer example, your swing is going to start changing and you're going to start resulting in going back to that old way of thinking and those old habits that got you in the same position that you're in now. So if you learn all these things and don't implement new processes and systems, you're going to repeat yourself once again. We don't want to do that. So what I want you to think is whether you guys are an entrepreneur or you work for someone or you work for yourself, you need to start thinking like an operator. Create a system that if you were to plug somebody else to that, or excuse me, if you were going to plug somebody else into this system, this day to day process, and this is basically like act like you're hiring yourself for your role to output more than what you're doing right now. What tangible steps, no matter how you currently feel, no matter how tired, positive, negative, how well they felt that day, if they followed these steps and these processes, how would they output the result that you want? The reason why this is so important is that consistent daily habits where if you follow these exact things are going to create the result that you want is going to create consistency and ultimately the most important thing, momentum. So for example, you could study all weekend long or hell every day about how to be a good sales rep. You could listen to motivational talks. You could take notes. But if you only call 10 people a day and you don't have success and maybe you close a deal here and there and yeah, you do it better, you're probably not going to be very successful. But if you know in your industry, let's say you're in the insurance industry, and you know that the best sales reps, no matter how talented they are, call an average of 350 to 400 people a day, you need to create a system and process that helps you most efficiently make those calls and set those scheduled appointments without burning yourself out. When do you call? How do you call? Is there technology or resources that you can use to make that more efficient? Could you delegate someone setting those appointments so you're only closing those deals. How would you do that more efficiently? I want you to think of everything like a machine. Even though it maybe it's just you, maybe you don't have a team, don't have a business, that's fine. 
You need to look at yourself as how can I replicate and scale my production or my team or my business or my company's con uh you know, production in a way that can be consistent, that can trend in an upward way that's not going up, down, up, down, and, and back and forth, and instead growing in something that you can actually build off of and become more successful. So I want you to implement these simplistic habits that once you have, you know, no matter how you feel, that when you follow these things, your life is going to get better. Here's some simple things. We already talked about calling as a sales rep, right? But maybe find a way to work out for 20 minutes a day at a minimum, six days a week. And no matter how you feel, just go do that. Here's another one. For 30 minutes every single day, you're going to read and learn something. So you constantly keep getting better, which results in you being more intelligent, more knowledgeable, and ultimately being a more well-rounded person at whatever you do. Those are two simple things that if you don't listen to anything else that we talked about on this podcast, that if you do those two things, I don't know exactly what's going to happen, but I know you're probably going to be more fit, which your mental health is going to improve too. And we also know that you're going to become more smart and you're going to be more successful because of those two things and your life is going to get better. See how simple this is? Those were two simple habits and disciplines that if you follow, no matter what goes on in your, your, your life, your world, your life's going to get better. So nobody knows your life and your problems and your current situation more than you. So I can't give you those detailed breakdowns unless we were having a one-on-one -on -one conversation, but you can. If you've pulled yourself away from the world in this moment or maybe down the line this weekend or later this month and you do these things, you will know the answers. You will know the things that you need to do to make your life more successful and more efficient. Two, let's talk about how to prevent a slump. The first thing is, like we talked about earlier, make absolute non-negotiable disciplines that you do every single day, no matter how you feel about it. If you only do things when it's easy or when it's necessary or when you have no other choice, you're always going to be at the mercy of the world and you're never going to be a top 1% individual. Top 1% thinks completely different than the rest of the world. You have to be disciplined. How do you build your discipline? By keeping the small promises that you have to yourself. Start with basic things. It'll bleed into every other area of your life and your business. Next, if you constantly are working, even if you're super disciplined, what can happen is by default, things can stall out. You can use, lose momentum. You can have some challenges in the marketplace, your industry with certain people that are outside of your control, and you can go back into a slump or a problem. How do you prevent this? We've talked about being disciplined. We've talked about getting the right people in your life. We've talked about all these little things that can help you. But how do you really prevent this? You got to give yourself time to evaluate everything that's going on in your life. Here's a simple thing. Spend 10 minutes. If you want to spend more, cool. But a minimum of 10 minutes at your end of your day, whether it's at 3 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 7 o'clock, whatever it is. And I want you to just sit there, take notes, and think about what was the result of today, what did you do, what problems did you have, and what things you need to adjust or do better to have a more successful day tomorrow. The reason why this is so important, that if, like we talked about earlier, if you're constantly busy and you're going nonstop, you're going to fall into bad habits by default. You're going to change, but not consciously, unconsciously, meaning that things just change different and you have a worse result for absolutely no reason. I want you to sit there and analyze the results. Imagine if we were watching sports and the NFL and the NBA suddenly stopped the entire league from recording stats and recording film from the game. It wouldn't take long for those leagues' production and success to tank. What you can't measure, you cannot improve. Start measuring and identifying the success and the failures and the problems that you're facing in your life every single day. Three, just because you achieve something or you learn something does not mean you keep it. What I mean by that is if you become super fit, you work out nonstop for an entire year. Does that mean you're fit forever? Of course not. If you have two years of unbelievable success as a business leader, as a salesperson, and now you just kind of go through the motions because you're good now, you know what you're doing. Does that guarantee you're going to be successful? No, because here's the problem. The best in the world, in the marketplace, 
they're getting better. They're doing these things that we're talking about times 10. So if you're not constantly improving, you're going to fall behind, you're going to get beaten, and you're going to get it ultimately exposed as a person, as a business leader, or as whatever you do in whatever field that you're in. You have to always, Mark Cuban says this, you have to work like someone's trying to take your role and take your money every single second of the day, no matter how wealthy, how successful you are. One common denominator, and this is what ultimately changed my life. If you guys, you've heard a lot of my story, how early on I would just literally go sit in a bookstore and read nonstop. And I still do these same things, reading, learning, and studying, because I am constantly in fear of falling behind. And when you look at the most successful people, for example, Warren Buffett, the first three, four hours of his day, all he does is literally reads. He learns. He reads about the market. He reads about stocks. He reads about the foreign policy, about politics, about business, all the things that he needs to learn. When you look at Elon Musk, he put rockets in the air, first private company to ever do so. How did he learn this? He literally read rocket books. The best people, you can see that they adjust to the new trends. You see AI, you saw crypto, you saw all these entrepreneurs that five years ago did not even remotely think about those things, yet they have successful ventures in those industries because they learned swiftly and they put their resources in a place that they know that can be successful. Were they right all the time? Were they successful all the time? No. But the reason why these people have won over decades and decades and decades of time, even though the world has changed so much, is because they never stopped learning. Think about the people from back home that maybe you grew up with that unfortunately just didn't end up being successful. Do you notice that they still have the same thing, same gig, same job that they had 20 years ago? You notice that they still go to the same restaurants, hang around the same people, kids go to the same school? Is it surprising that their life hasn't changed for the better? Now, I'm not saying that's a bad lifestyle, but obviously we're talking about doing things that 99% of the world isn't doing. So if that's the case, and those specific people's lives aren't changing, they're not fit, they're not successful like you know maybe you guys are wanting to do, then we don't need to do those habits. We need to think differently and move like a top 1% earner in the world. When um, I work with my sales reps, I have sales teams, I have residential solar company, we're in 15 states, and working with sales reps is extremely complex, and I find myself in a never-ending kind of just situation of me having to get better and having to develop and learn. And what worked managing a person two years ago won't work today because their life's changed, they've changed, I've changed, the market changed, all these things. And I had a sales rep that in the first year of my company was the number one sales rep in the company. He's relentless, hard worker. But the thing is when he started and working in the organization, he tripled his income, but that first month, he was barely getting by. I mean, I've never seen someone so stressed because he was in such a tight financial situation. But after he made six figures, after he was super successful, his daily efforts, you notice that he used to make 150 calls a day. Now he made 30 to 50. But the thing was, he was better now. So he could get away with it. He could still close five to seven deals, but he didn't have to work as hard. But what happened is other sales reps started coming into the organization and beating him. Now, he was a competitive person. He said, Grant, like, this is it's pissing me off. There's no way that that other sales rep and this other person is better than me. Help me. Let's, let's diet. Let's like think through this. Let's strategize. How can I be the number one sales rep this year? I want to change everything. And so I said, well, like, first off, let's break down what you were doing when you had your record year. And we looked at it and he said, well, you know, I was calling like a relentless amount of people. And he said, Grant, there were sometimes I'd call three, 400 people a day. And I go, okay, well, let's look at the data. You know, how many people have you called this past week? And I go, well, man, you've only called 400 people an entire week. You said you used to do that in a day? He goes, damn. I go, now, obviously, you're setting more appointments, right? Let's look at the appointments, right? How many appointments were you setting in 2020 versus 2023? And he was like, whoa, this is a big difference. I said, well, now let's kind of, let's listen to a couple of recordings on your pitch and let's see if anything can change. Well, first thing is he was missing little tiny things that are part of our process, our sales process, our pitch, everything like that, that he knows, but it just changed. And the thing was, he sounded so good that he got away with this. 
And he said, well, damn, I didn't even realize that. And he said, well, thing is, Grant, there's just so many no-shows that are happening. This isn't normal. And I said, well, let's look at the data. And we looked back at it, and he actually had about a percent higher of a show rate in that year, 2023, compared to 2020. So we're like, wait. He goes, oh, my God, I didn't even notice this. The problem was he was just simply setting less appointments, and he had changed his pitch and his day-to-day process because he was so good he was able to get away with it. These were minor changes that he was more than intelligent enough to do, more than capable enough, but he just got caught up into the mix. You get busy. This happens. That happens. Next thing you know, you get in a slump. Within a week, he's like, I'm going to fix this. Just watch. I'm going to be the number one sales rep. Boom. He did a record sales month. Boom. He did a record sales month. He ended up making double and triple what he was making in the previous months simply by changing three or four little tiny daily habits that he realized he was not doing over the past couple of years that all he needed to do is figure out what it was and implement it as fast as possible. We can all do this in our lives, but we first have to be conscious, humble, and coachable. And most importantly, what you do not track and what you do not measure, you will never improve. We don't need to play guessing games. You guys need to look real raw numbers. What are you making? What is your production? What are you doing good? What are you doing wrong? All these different things, and it will change your life for the better. So I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast episode. As always, I appreciate the love and the support. My target this year, I'm saying it right now so you guys can hold me accountable, is to release 52 podcast episodes and have at least 20 guests on. And I want to have world changers on, people that are doing unbelievable things that blow our minds about how successful they are and creative that they are. So as always, thank you guys for the feedback. If you haven't already, make sure to like and subscribe on YouTube, on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all that good stuff. And if you guys enjoy it, leave a review. And if you guys have any feedback, guests you want us to have on, um, perspectives, topics you guys want us to talk about, uh, make sure to message me on Instagram at Grant Mint. And as always, I hope you guys have an incredible week and I'll see you guys again for episode 67. Thanks guys.